Good morning, my mud fossil friends. It's Roger one more time here with a virtual bowl of ice cream. For me, this is what I enjoy most is ice cream and trying to figure out things. Now, I got this from my friend Mar, Chili, from down in Chile, and then she says uh, it's called the Torre del Pain in southern Chile. Will you do, analyze it for me? Take a look at it. And uh, they claim it to be cyclopean rocks. And she says she doesn't think that that's probably correct. And I agree with her assessment of that incorrect conclusion. Now, what are we looking at? Well, let's just take a look. Okay, anybody who's been with the mud fossils knows I took over and over it, abrupt transition, abrupt transition. What does that mean? Well, you should know by now. It means where two different tissues meet. Normally, it's t uh, muscle and tendon. There's a gluey strip in there. There's a strip of literal glue. And it's an abrupt transition. When it breaks, it breaks right on that line. It's like super glue. I'm telling you, I, I, it is. Now, when it breaks, it breaks right on that abrupt transition. And here's the, an abrupt transition right here from this to this. Now, what are we looking at? Well, there's the gluey spot. That right there is this little strip here is the gluey strip. They make these bumps and they attach to this glue, whatever it is, and then it comes to the to the f tissue, which is the muscle tissue. See it? These are what the, the stripes of muscle look like. And you'll see it in mine I have over here. Now, um, what else is going on here? Right at this spot, right about here, is where the abrupt transition ends. And then you go into the tendons. The tendons have begun to erode. These are straight little stripes of tendon, little tiny, 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 tiny fibers separated in slabs like little tiny straight slabs coming out of here and now they've eroded so this was a tendon facing up and the muscle is facing down all right this is where you really need to play with the light a little bit and you know I'm coming way back here and getting in the darkness where you can see the muscle fibers coming wrapping around and the muscles and right there that's the abrupt transition where it begins to turn into the tendons now I hope you can see it it's a uh, these are hard to understand if you're not a mud fossil person and you don't understand anatomy and so forth, but I do and it is what it, I'm telling you it is. And that is the, right back here, you see these little grooves and all those little lines and things? That is the tendinous material that comes wrapping to the back. This is where we get into the muscles in the front and it ends up being this muscular looking stuff you see all this weave of muscles here? That's not sedimentation. That's muscular, you know, the weave of muscles weaving in and out. And this up here is where the transition goes and they break off here. You see that bundle snap right off there? These are little bundles and they break off at certain abrupt transitions. And I talk about the abrupt transitions all the time. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you look there's layers of red blood. Let's see if I can show you a layer here. Well, I'll show you two layers because there's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. Now, if you look here, you see this? You see that? That's red blood. That's red. The whole thing here, that whole layer is red blood. You see it rub right off here? They call that okra. And it's just nothing more than red blood. It's red blood. And the whole thing, this whole thing here, is red blood. Then you get down into the muscle tissue. See this? It, it just dropped right on there. That's the red blood. Now, if I put this on the microscope, it will actually show up as red blood. And I'll bet you there's going to be, going to be um, actually, see? There will actually be... Um, blood vessel. I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain there's going to be DNA in there. I don't see why there shouldn't be. I'm finding DNA and all my other stuff. I've had them DNA certified. Now on the bottom, that whole bottom piece is a big layer. That's like a gigantic scab. You see it? This was wet just a minute ago. That's just all what this is all blood. This 
whole thing was blood at the bottom. Now uh, that's that's what they do. They service the muscle. I don't know what kind of muscle it was. I don't know what kind of creature it was, but it was from a good sized creature. And that is the muscle. And that is right there. That's that gooey little abrupt transition. You see it? You go from this tissuey stuff, which is the weavy stuff on the lower part and then you go into the tendon fibers and you can see them in there they're little straps i don't know if you'll be able to see it well but i have uh i have it in a microscope where it's extremely easy to see they're perfect little boards coming out of there so that is the abrupt transition just like we were looking at down there in chile okay this is nothing more than a bundle of muscles and the muscles go in from the, where the tendons attach. Now you can see all the different layers. I mean, there are literally thousands and thousands of layers in muscle. They don't seem to understand how unbelievably dense the number of layers is in muscles. I don't see that in the anatomical drawings, what I see in the mud fossils. And the mud fossils are the true product of a living creature. All right, this came in from Scott Wiles. This is the same sort of thing. This is a, a tendon ball. This right here is the ball. And this is where it's gluing the strap to the ball. That is the abrupt transition glue, right? Same, same, same stuff. It has a couple of balls of, of whatever that is. And then it runs into that gluey stuff, identical to what I've been showing you. These are the strappy fibers. Now look at this, how unbelievable this gluey stuff is. You see it? Now, up here, you see this? That's the fibers that are in the strap, and I'll show you mine. All right, this is the tendon ball that I have here. That's the stalk, and as it wraps over, that is that same stuff that comes down. There's the abrupt transitions. I, I, I doubt if you're going to be able to see them, but there's, um, there's a couple of transitions that come to the stalk. To the stalk. And then this one here is eroded, but it, it came over the top and would have been there. And this is the ball here that it attached to. It's a tendon um, emphasis attachment. So, like I said, that is the tendon ball that is underneath here. All right, this is a stone ball. They fracture in the middle a lot. And this is what, you know, this is a good example showing how it's sticking up. And then you have the dark blood and the light blood because it's serviced. But everything has to be serviced by blood. Now, they're pretty stony in your body and they're very inert. But they still require some supplement of something. I don't know what they're feeding it, but blood goes in there and comes back out. And that is the structure of them inside as the outside edges are rolled away. Now Lee Simpson sent me this and this is the outside is, is this but inside of that is a complete hole. There's a big round hole inside and I'll show you. Alright here's what happens to them. That is that boxy looking stuff that's all around. It's filled with I believe it's chert and flint. Then you get to the center and there's a big round hole and I'll show you that. All right, this is about the best example I have. This is, I believe, chert, flint, whatever you want to call that, surrounding the cavity, which is normally filled with, I believe it's like sand. I'm not certain of that. I haven't done the chemistry. But coming out of there, there'll be a strap that runs to this ball. And these are the anchors. That's what these balls are. They're anchors. And they anchor everything. They anchor your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments. Your skin is anchored. All of your skin is on a webbing of these balls and straps, and they, they call it interstitium now. And that is the fabric of your skin. And as it pulls and pulls this way, it'll always return because these are embedded in the clays of your skin. You see that? They've always wondered how they made these plates. <laughs> they cut straight through those stone balls. Somehow they didn't fall apart. These are the, the, that's the churdy looking stuff that's around the outside. And then there is a circle in the center. You saw it. It has a cavity with an exact circle in it. And then they just took the sand out of the middle and they did a little sculpting and there it is. Now, remember I told you your skin is loaded with these tendon balls too? These are the little tiny balls on little tiny wavy straps and they everywhere. Now, these have eroded away the skin layer and the clay. It's literally clay. 
It's a, the, the, your flesh inside your skin between the top layer and the basement layer is literally clay. It's a plastic clay. And that these balls fit everywhere over the whole thing. There's the things that give you goosebumps. And the little straps inside of there just trail all different directions. And I'm going to show you some on Mars, because Mars is the same as Earth. It was alive once it's dead. Earth's surface here was alive, and now it appears to be dead. I, I don't have all the answers. I'm showing you what I'm seeing, and I'm telling you what the anatomy is, and I'm telling you what the chemistry is, and I'm telling you what the biology is, and I'm telling you what the history is, and this is what it is. This was skin. These were the interstitium balls. There was all kinds of little things, and at one time, this was a living creature, and its flesh was stretching and coming back just like ours does. You see that? That's interstitium. These little tiny balls are the little things I just showed you in that last shot where they were all over the desert. Now, underneath that is the layer of skin, of, of body tissue. But between the body tissue and the outside layer, which has eroded away, is this interstitium. And this is what allows your body to pull this way and that way and return because if you stretch here, stretch there, it's always going to come back. This is already stretched. You see this? This skin is pulled over here. The skin is pulled over here. It's pulled over here. It's compacted here, compacted here. It will fill back in and just make this whole matrix exactly the same again if it was not under stress and it was not dead, which it is now dead. This is the surface of Mars. This is called the Mars Morris Codes. And they have no clue what it is. And it is interstitium. And this is the skin that was on top of Mars when it was alive. Just like it was on Earth. As above, so below. And that is extremely fine, as you can see. And the reason for that is that on Mars, the erosion factor is way different than it is on Earth. That's why all you could see on Earth was the balls. On Mars, you're still seeing a lot of the straps. And the straps have not eroded like they do on Earth. Different different chemistry going on up there. Different, you know, um, abrasiveness. Different, um, you know, uh, destructiveness of the of the the surface of, of Mars. It's very lightly sanded and, and blown around and so forth. doesn't have the same weather patterns as we do have here. These are the same little blueberries they call them up on Mars. That's it right on top of the skin. It's the skin has eroded away and the clays have blown away and dried up and that what you left off with is, is the balls. This, those are the little interstitium balls that would have held the skin layer, the layer of plastic clays that coats everybody's body, it would have held them in position so they could move around, move around, and the little anchors would bring the straps back to where they belong. Okay, this is the Mars crab. That's the vein, I mean the artery, which has all the spikes going in, which is the little blood vessels to feed all of this tissue. See, it's way down here, so it's, this is expanded. But this right here is the connective tissue, and the things that have eroded in between it is the blood and the uh, muscular um, flesh, because it's very uh, it's it's weak. The connective tissue is tough. That's it's it's your structural part. The weak stuff just runs out of there. It just uh, because it gets very dry, powdery, runs away, and that's what you have here. And that is the cr the Mars crab they call it. These blood vessels are servicing this muscle, which is the entire muscle, and there's a bunch of them, I'm sure. It's not just this one. Now, that vein returns blood back up to the heart and lungs to be uh, reoxygenated, and the red blood goes down and services the tissues. That's the nature of life of a creature, and Mars was a creature. It is now dead.